Welcome to Managing Microservices in Practice. I'm your author and host, Josh Garverick. I've been a professional software developer for over 15 years. I've worked in both domestic and international software platforms. I've led many DevOps transformations from small companies to large enterprises. As far as industry verticals go, I've worked in logistics, healthcare, finance, retail, and aerospace. I'm currently a Microsoft MVP in Azure. I'm a member of the ALM DevOps Rangers, and I'm also an, an author of a book titled Migrating to Azure. Let's take a look at the course overview. We're going to learn many different things across the duration of this course. First, we're going to go through a quick introduction and a test cluster setup. We'll take a look at things like Docker Compose, Docker for Desktop, and Minikube. Next, we'll look at how to use and deploy your cluster. This ranges from getting familiar with the kubectl or kubectl command, as well as deploying a single pod, creating a deployment that consists of many different objects, and scaling that deployment using horizontal pod autoscalers or HPA. After that, we're going to talk about securing your cluster. There are different ways that you can secure your cluster, and we'll cover on Kubernetes RBAC, or Role-Based Access Control, as well as platform-level authentication control. In this case, Microsoft Azure will allow you to use Azure Active Directory to authenticate users into the cluster. Next, we'll talk about managing communication with microservices. There are many different tools out there that will allow you to either permissively or restrictively control the traffic that goes between the services within your cluster. We'll take a look at a couple of different options there. Next, we'll talk about continuous integration and continuous deployment. Continuous integration, obviously being the continual building of source code, images, and anything else that you may need to run your application in Kubernetes. And continuous deployment, is an automated mechanism that allows that continuous integration build to be pushed to one or more environments. Lastly, we're going to talk about operationalizing your cluster. This is specifically important because there are a lot of different ways to monitor, alert, react, and schedule different activities within the cluster itself. You obviously will want alerts on your application, but you also want to know what's going on within the nodes in your cluster, any system processes, things like that. It will be really important to get that information, and we'll cover a couple of different ways that you can get that information and make it meaningful to you and anyone else who is responsible for the operational support of Kubernetes. Let's talk about some prerequisites. You need to have general knowledge of Docker, containerization, containerized workloads, how Docker works at a very high level. You should also have a basic understanding of programming languages. While creating Docker files isn't necessarily a programming language unto itself, you will need to know how to construct things that will go into those containers and interact with certain types of containers. Finally, you're going to make sure that you have the latest version of Visual Studio Code installed on your workstation. Let's talk about some course goals. This course has six specific goals in mind for you, the end user. First, you should be able to gain an understanding of all the building blocks of a Kubernetes cluster. You should be able to efficiently use the everyday tools of a Kubernetes administrator. You should be able to communicate effectively with your microservices from every angle. So between services, out, from outside the cluster, from other namespaces and things of that nature. You should be able to discern the difference between CI, continuous integration, and CD, continuous delivery, and why you need them. Throughout the course, you should be able to find out what CI, CD tools work well for you with respect to Kubernetes and cluster deployments. And finally, keeping your applications and your tools live and ready. With that said, let's get started on managing microservices in practice.